back to this slide. If Israel is involved in World War III, Israel will probably be the winner. If we suppose that the current tension between Israel and Iran will spread to the Third World War, and if Israel loses to Iran at this time, and knowing that there's another war waiting at that later time called the Battle of Armageddon, it would not make much sense if Israel loses to the World War III and yet will be made to withstand against the coalition forces again in the Battle of Armageddon. Why would the strong nations ally up to trample Israel, who is already found defeated in the World War III? So we can predict the outcome that the Israel will probably be the winner of World War III. Also, if Israel wins, it is probably for the Antichrist to use the condition to rebuild the Jerusalem Temple as the bait to seduce Israel into making the seven-year covenant. Rebuilding the Jerusalem Temple has been the Israel's long-standing wish. And if Israel wins the war, what will be the condition that Israel wants to see in the resulting covenant? Therefore, it is probable that the Antichrist will utilize the temple rebuilding condition to bring Israel to the negotiation table for the seven-year covenant. To examine latter 1,260 days more closely, Let's read Revelation chapter 11, in verse 2. But the court which is without temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So here, it's talking about the latter 1,260 days. And in Revelation chapter 12, we see the woman appear. And I believe this woman is the Jerusalem above, written in Galatians 4.26, which reads, But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. The woman is spiritual, symbolic city of Jerusalem, where Jesus our Lord reigns. Therefore the woman here cannot be the mother Mary, or the church of God, or the body of Christ, as some interpret, and there are many reasons for it. Since we see the woman in Revelation chapter 12 giving birth to a child, the woman cannot represent a church or body of Christ who is still a bride waiting to be wedded to Jesus Christ, our bridegroom. Therefore, if woman represents the church, then it cannot be giving birth to a child as a virgin. According to Revelation's first chapter, verse 1, and the last 22nd chapter, verse 6, the revelation is clearly written to show the things which must shortly come to pass. Therefore, John was not envisioning about Virgin Mary giving birth to baby Jesus. Claiming the male child to be Jesus, therefore, introduces greater conflict because this child was caught up to heaven as soon as he was born. Yet our Lord Jesus ascended to heaven after fulfilling his ministry on earth. Therefore, while the man-child is caught up to heaven without experiencing death on earth, our Lord Jesus was born to die on the cross on our behalf. Additionally, the woman in the passage is someone that the dragon persecutes, but not makes war with. It is only the offspring of the woman that the dragon makes war with. Why is this? It is because the Jerusalem above is where our Lord reigns. Hence, Satan cannot infiltrate the space to wage war against, but can only persecute from outside the city limits. This is why the dragon cannot make war with the woman, but can only persecute her. Lastly and briefly, the symbolic woman must give birth to a symbolic child. And just as the spiritual Jerusalem above, gave birth to a physical saint on earth, this woman gives birth to a male child figure who represents plural physical beings expressed in a collective singular entity. We will touch more on this subject in later slides and the significance of this interpretation will become clear and thoroughly explained. However, let us continue on to the following passages that reveals to us about the latter 1260 days. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, 
where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. One thousand two hundred sixty days in this verse also takes place in the latter three point five years. Revelation chapter thirteen verse five. And there was given unto him, the beast who is the Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. The, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Here in chapter 13, it talks about the forty-two months. It is the same latter 3.5 year period when the beast will persecute the saints. So we can know that there is still latter 1,260 days of 42 months remaining for the saints of God to endure until the Lord returns. If this is so, then the question is, will the entire body of church be left behind for latter 1,260 days? This is not so. We must be careful about saying things like, People who believe in Jesus have the Holy Spirit indwelling, so everyone will be raptured and no individual will be left behind. Such claims cannot be true because here we see the woman fleeing to the wilderness in the latter 1,260 days to escape the persecution. Therefore, not every Christian individual is to be raptured unconditionally without exception. Likewise, not all Christians are to suffer tribulation either. As we will discuss this more in time to come, it is not the saints in entirety that remain in the latter 1,260 days. Some will be raptured and some will be left behind. Again, to review, World War III will occur first. Then the seven year period will begin. Then within nine months, the Jerusalem temple will be rebuilt and the daily sacrifice will begin. Then the seventh trumpet will sound, and the abomination of desolation will stand in the holy place in the middle of the week, and after 1,260 days at the end of the latter half of the seven-year period, Jesus Christ will return to earth, and this is probably when the Lord comes to help Israel and lead the war into victory, and on the day 1,290, there will be a cleansing of the sanctuary. Now, regarding the persecution of saints, Revelation chapter 13, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. It's talking about the Antichrist dying and coming back to life again. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Almost toward the end of the first 3.5 years, it is when the Antichrist nearly dies from a fatal wound but heals again. So, it is probable to say, as said in the Bible, that this political ruler was assassinated by some opposing force. But when the assassination plan fails, and when the beast miraculously revives back to life, people of this world calls him the Messiah and follow after him. Verse 5, And there was given unto him the beast who is the Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. It says that he will receive power over all tribes, language, and nations. So this is why people are speaking of the coming world government. It even says that he will make war with the saints and overcome them. So clearly, there are saints who will not be raptured, but left to fight the war. The 42 months highlighted above is about the latter 3.5 years. Verse 15, And he, speaking of the false prophet, had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Bible speaks about killing of Christians who do not receive the mark of the beast. It is the famous mark, also widely known as the number 666. 
Revelation 13, 16 says, And he, the false prophet, or the second beast, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, which is six six six. The problem here is that inside this identification mark, a system is embedded so that it can restrict buying and selling of individuals. This type of persecution will force the Christians to flee into wilderness, and we can foresee such time is coming. Here is the timeline chart again. The abomination of desolation and the mark of the beast are introduced starting at the middle of the seven-year period, and whoever that doesn't receive the mark will be restricted from the buying and selling, and whoever refuses to worship the beast will be killed. Let's touch on rapture. Revelation 6 verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. This is Revelation chapter 6. Many people argue that we see the souls of those who are already in heaven, so they argue the rapture has already taken place in chapter 6. However, According to our assumption that Revelation is written in chronological order, this passage from Revelation chapter 6 is still back in the fifth seal. Therefore, it is difficult to identify these souls as those raptured. The souls in the passage probably represent the saints of the Old Testament rather than those who are raptured. This is because we read about God providing them with the white robes, which represent the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If this is so, then these souls in the passage are the people who believe in God in the days of the Old Testament who are receiving the right robes prepared by Jesus Christ on the cross. Then some people ask, why does Revelation introduce the souls from the Old Testament? If they are not raptured people, why are they mentioned? We will touch on this more when we talk about the seven seals of Revelation in a separate video. But as there were many believers who were slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held, it is prophesying about the time in New Testament, at the opening of the fifth seal, that there will be a great bloodshed of Christians on earth. And historically speaking, there was a time when Christians were slaughtered in great numbers at the time corresponding to the fifth seal, but the persecution and killings in the time of this last seven-year period will be even greater. In sum, God has revealed to us about the martyrs of the Old Testament as well as the martyrs slain in the New Testament. If the seals and trumpets indeed occur in chronological order, and if these souls also represent those who are raptured in heaven, then chronologically speaking, the rapture already must have taken place. But such interpretation is error by irreconcilable contradiction and inconsistency because in today's history, the fifth seal as well as the sixth seal have been opened, but the rapture has not happened yet. Therefore, the discrepancy is apparent. And for these reasons, I can hardly accept the interpretation that these souls represent those who are already raptured.